We're live. Mike Simber, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. MLW returning to original programming Wednesday with the launch of Fusion Alpha, three-match show. It will debut on YouTube at 7 p.m. Eastern, airings on B in Sports later in the week. On the show, Davey Richards making his MLW debut versus TJP, and we're very happy to be joined by Davey Richards here today. Davey, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Man, it's been a long time. <laughs> Boy, it sure has. Yes. <laughs> Old ICW days. That's right. For those I, I mentioned earlier in the show, I, I was there from the very first day that you went to wrestling school with Tim Flowers. And actually, I don't know who was actually running the school at that point. That's arguable. But uh, you were there yeah. at the school from the beginning. Yeah, I got uh, I to gotta give credit where credit's due. Uh, uh, Sonny O'Mara, he, he showed me a lot. He was a good guy. Yes. Oh, Sonny. You know, it's funny because like uh, there there were a few guys that that made it big. Uh, you, uh, Spanky, Brian Kendrick, obviously Brian Danielson, who's working at twenty thousand person show here tonight, and uh, they all had one thing in common, which was they start. I mean, you started and you couldn't wait to get out of there, and uh, they never even bothered starting. They just immediately got out of there because there's like nothing. I shouldn't say nothing because there was wrestling up there, but like if you wanted to make it in the late '90s, early 2000s, like you just had to leave. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. There was no question. Even 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 California didn't have a whole ton going on. I mean, everything was East Coast. Yep, yep. I guess uh you've been you've been gone for a while. And uh yeah. what what have you been I know you did uh like paramedics and firefighting and that sort of thing. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh that had been yeah, your always. your passion. What happened? Uh I went to medical school. Medical so school. I, I, I kind of, I kind of just reached a point where I could no longer simultaneously do school and do wrestling full time. I, you know, one would have suffered, and you know, obviously, I wasn't able to allow one to suffer. So, um, plus, just wrestling for so many years, I kind of needed a break, and so focused on school. And I'd also just become a father, so that was really important to me. And uh, yeah, I wanted to be a fireman and a, and a paramedic, and uh, so I got to do all that, and, uh, you know, my school has lightened up a little bit, so I can return to wrestling and give it my all, so the, the time was just right. The time was right to leave, and the time was right to come back. So are you, I guess, explain a little bit of this to me in terms of fireman and paramedic, because, uh, you know, I, I knew, I've had several firemen that I've known, and, you know, they had weird hours, because they lived at the firehouse. They would be there yeah. X number of days, and then they would have days off. I mean, is that part of what you're going to be doing, or will you have a more normal schedule as a paramedic? Uh, so where I live in St. Louis, you have to be, you're both simultaneous. So you're both a firefighter and paramedic, and you have to be able to flip back and forth at a moment's notice. So uh, I, when I was full-time, it was you work two days straight, and then you were off for four days straight. But now that I'm just part-time uh, because I'm back to wrestling, um, I just I kind of pick up shifts when I feel like it. Yeah, I ask because obviously, you know, wrestling, traveling, one coast to the other, I mean, it's not ideal when it comes to trying to sleep. And then adding on top of that a job where you have to not sleep for a long time. And I was just wondering how that's been balancing those two things. Um, it, It's kind of all I know. So, uh, you know, I mean, there's some nights, you know, you won't get a call, you know, and, and you can sleep for the night. And there's other times that, you know, you're fighting fire at 3 a.m. or someone got shot or something, you know. So you never really know. But um, I've learned a lot more about balance, you know. Uh, well, at least I think. Maybe my wife would be a better person to ask about that. But, it's you know, I, I'm doing things that I love to do. So it's very easy to get motivated because I'm not being forced to do something I don't want to do. So this has been a passion of yours for a long time. What was it about firefighting and and uh, and being a paramedic that uh, what what attracted you to it? How long have you been interested? Is it like a childhood dream? No, um, I didn't even know what. Uh, I, it all started when I first moved to St. Louis um, in two thousand seven, and um, you know I, I knew then I didn't have. I knew then that I loved wrestling, but I didn't have aspirations to go to like WWE or anything. And, and especially back then, that was there was less places to make a really good full time living wrestling. So I already knew like there was something else I needed to be looking into. 
And uh, I was working out at a gym, and there was these St. Louis City firefighters. I'm like, oh, you'd be great. And they explained to me how it worked. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And they told me, well, you have to go to paramedic school. And I fell in love with that. So, I mean, I guess I, I guess part of it, you know, you get used to the adrenaline rushes from wrestling. That's always going to be me. But um, I'm very comfortable in that, you know, oh, crap situation, you know what I mean, where it's like our, it's all or nothing and everything's on the line. So I like that atmosphere. So it just it fit in perfect with my personality. Now, a lot of people, when they're they're out of the business for X number of years, some of them, when they return, they've maybe watched some stuff or they've, you know, they still have the passion for wrestling, so they're watching stuff even though they're not working. And right. they, they decide they're going to come back and they want to change this about their style or they want to add this to what they're doing. Did you have any of that or, or are you feeling like, you know, I really liked what I was doing before and so that's what I'm going to do when I come back? Uh, so when I left, I didn't watch any wrestling. I didn't watch any wrestling whatsoever because I didn't want to get the itch for it. And I had to really concentrate on stuff. So, um, and I did, so I definitely didn't watch my own stuff, but as far as me, I mean, I, I mean, you know, I'm going to wrestle the way that, that I, you know, I'm kind of built to wrestle for and the kind of stuff that I'm influenced by. My influences are always going to be the same. So I'm not going to have any new, you know, current influences. So I think it's largely, um, largely the same. I mean, I've taken out a few things that I don't fit that I thought like fit, and you know. Plus, I think for me personally, or not even me personally, you know, the the wrestling landscape has changed in a sense that I think pure technical wrestling is kind of reemerging. So, which is you know, so I'm able to do a lot more of that, which is fantastic. Davey, you, you were like you wrestled the holy trinity of guys who are not signed to WWE or AEW right now on the scene. Well, Daniel Garcia, I guess, has been signed by AEW, but Josh Alexander, Fred Yehi, Daniel Garcia, you wrestled all of these men in a short period of time. I thought the match yeah. at AEW was fabulous. I, I thought it was great. I loved what Alexander and Yehi did. What do you feel about this new crop or, or this younger crop of guys who are coming along and really valuing? chain wrestling really valuing the the art of of grappling and inserting it into their game and having it pick up some steam it feels like amongst fans as well too yeah i think you have a a group of people who are who are true students uh, of the game and i think uh, I, i've always you know been outspoken about wrestling the sport first um and i think more people now share that mentality um you know, so you're seeing a lot more athletes in wrestling who, who are, you know, their goal is um, to, to be entertaining, but, you know, to, to be so good at wrestling that it's entertaining, so if, that, if that makes any sense. So I think, yeah, people that are putting the wrestling first and because they're so good at it, it's, it's that's become the entertainment factor. So knowing you, knowing your style, having seen a million of your matches, and also knowing... I'm sorry. Very well. <laughs> Filthy Tom Lawler. Uh -oh. Yes, October 2nd at the former ECW Arena, the Opera Cup, first round match. You and Filthy Tom Lawler. What are your thoughts on this match? Tom is the only person in wrestling that's uglier than me. So we definitely will not uh, mess up each other's good looks. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, the guy's great. You know, he's absolutely he's he's talented beyond words, and uh, you know it's you know I've wrestled quite a few crossover athletes that have come from various things into wrestling. And nine times out of ten, not all the time, but nine times out of ten, it's a struggle for them to pick up pick it up because they think like, oh, you know, this is going to be easy. You know, da da da. Um, Tom was just, I, I actually wrestled Tom in um, in Oregon. A couple few years ago, and I remember going into me like, "Oh, this is going to be rough," you know. But he's so good. I'm like, "You sure you just been doing this for a little bit?" So, yeah, Tom's a great guy, great addition to our sport, and uh, you know, he's you know so happy to get to work with him in MLW, and you know, and he's you know he's legit, you know, he's as legit as they come. And <clears throat> so he'll bring the best out of me, and hope do the same for him. And I think uh, you know when you have two people like that, they're trying to you know prove they're the better wrestler. I think that's when the magic happens. So I look forward to it. So if I recall correctly, like you were doing a lot of, of jiu-jitsu or MMA or, or what was it and what's going on now? Yeah, I, uh, I, I've been doing jiu-jitsu now for, jeez. Oh, uh, well, I, I ran amateur wrestle in high school and amateur wrestle in college and then went and uh, 
you know, train, you know, for pro wrestling and uh, found jujitsu and kickboxing, gosh, seven years ago, give or take. Um, and then had to take a little time off because of a, a knee injury. But other than that, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I love it. So, I mean, I'm always going to be interested in, like, grappling arts. So, it's uh, I'm actually going to go train with Barnett and do some catch next week. So, I'm always looking to learn new stuff. Tom's in our chat here says, you better watch out. But it sounds like he might need to watch out. This guy has, <laughs> he hasn't done any yeah, MMA in several years now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, you got TJP as well. And uh, what? Uh, who in MLW, now that you you have made your return here, I mean, have you got a chance to watch the show? And, and what are some other names that maybe you, you have never wrestled before? Or maybe that you have wrestled before, and you're like, my God, I can go back and have another match with this guy. Yeah, I, I could wrestle TJP. We've wrestled a million times, I think, in every country in the, or every continent in the world, and I could do it again. And it, he's so good. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of new people that are coming in, too, that I'd really love to like. I mean, I've never, well, they brought this Nigeria. I'd love to wrestle him. That'd be great. Uh, Alex Hammerstone, that'd be great. Fatu would be great. Um, even getting a tag partner and, you know, getting there with Von Erics again, that'd be a lot of fun. So there's just a who's who, you know, like a, we just got Alex Shelley in there. I mean, the Opera Cup's just stacked. So, I mean, like, if I, if I can get past Tom, then, you know, I may end up with, you know, Bobby Fish or TJP again or, you know, I don't know who. But it's uh, it, it's really cool because there's no real underdogs in the tournament. So you never really know what's going to happen. So how long exactly were you out before this, this most recent return? I think. I think four years. Four Three years. And a half to four years. So, so for you, was it like riding a bike? I, I forget who said it, but I think it was Daniel Brian Daniel said something like it's it, it's like riding a very violent bike. Was that how it was for you? Was there a was there a uh, kind of a few matches that it took you to get back into the groove, or what was it like coming back? Yeah, I, I, yeah, he must be right because I didn't think it would be such a natural process i mean the first match the first match back i had after four and a half years went like 30 minutes and you know and it it was just it felt natural and yeah i I guess brian said it best you know i mean it really does it felt very natural and i I had to adjust back to like taking the bumps you know i was pretty sore the first after the first few matches but uh now it feels a lot better so it's punk yeah uh, punk is the one that said it right where i left off so, so I mean, uh, yeah, it was apparently it was CM Punk that had made that comment there. But you're telling me that somebody booked you for your first match back and then told you you had to go 30? No, they didn't tell me that. I could have gone 10. but I, I see. You know, <laughs> me, me being me. And uh, I don't like, you know, that's why I don't think I'm ever really going to be cut out for uh, a big TV, you know, um, kind of organization that relies on television. I just, I don't like wrestling, you know, five, six you know, seven minutes. I really don't. I like to get in there in 15 to 20, and that's just how I like to wrestle. So it, to me, I, I didn't plan on going 30, of course, but I definitely plan on going for a little while. I, mean, I just wanted to kind of test myself and see where I was. Well, stand by. We're going to head to a break. We'll be back in a moment to talk more Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, Davey Richards. One of these days, we got to do a show talking about the old days. We did a lot of it during the break. <laughs> Not sure how much we want to say, but anyway, a lot of big, a lot of big things coming up with uh, MLW and Davey here. As noted, October second, the Opera Cup, Philadelphia. Tom Lawler and Davey Richards there in the first round, so that should be awesome. And then TJP and Davey Richards is coming Wednesday. Uh, Alpha, MLW Alpha, seven o'clock p.m. on YouTube and BN Sports later in the week. So, uh, David, let's get some plugs in for your own social media and uh, how anyone can contact you. Yeah, I just uh, primarily just on Twitter at Richards Wesley, and that's where people can keep up with my wrestling and my uh, training and all that kind of stuff and my daily struggles with modern technology. So it's pretty entertaining. My pain is entertaining. <laughs> your daily struggles with modern technology? You become um, one of them? It's, yeah, it's amazing. Four hours to figure out this damn Venmo thing. <laughs> now, now you're that old grizzled vet in the locker room. <laughs> that, that we I all know, drove am. us nuts yeah. in the early 2000s. I am. I, yeah, I'm the guy still bringing his checkbook. Damn it. 
<laughs> That's right. Well, listen, Davey, I want to thank I want to thank you for doing the show here today, and best of luck with everything as noted. MLW Alpha YouTube, seven p.m. Eastern. Be in sports, and of course, the Opera Cup is coming up as well. And we are totally out of time, everybody. I want to thank Mike as always, callers and listeners into the studio. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.